What is going on guys? It's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you my day two Las Vegas UDS Invitational Trickstar Sky Striker deck profile. That is right. I believe I was the only Trickstar to make day two, which was the top 64 cut after day one. I ended up making it all the way up to round 11, getting yet another feature match which I also happen to lose. So we're all three for feature matches, so maybe we have to break the curse someday later on. But the reason I decided to play this deck is just because it has so many good matchups with the current metagame. It plays very well against Sky Striker. It actually plays very well against Salamangrate because of specific cards like Reincarnation. And I'm also very comfortable with the deck just because I've played the deck for so long now that I felt like rather than learning Salamangrate and possibly having the potential to misplay, I'd rather play a deck that I'm much more comfortable with, even if it might not be the better, you know, over overall deck objectively. So I know you guys like these profiles and I know you've been waiting for this one. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring that to you guys today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So kicking things off, we have three copies of Trickstar Candina. I'm not going to dwell too much on the typical Trickstar cards because you guys know what these cards are for. Two copies of Licorice. Um, the one thing I will say about this is that I actually think I want to run three of this in the future with Salamangrate running around and we have stuff like Impermanence and Effect Veiler being much more prominent in the metagame. Licorice is really nice because there's, since there's such a higher likelihood that people are going to try to negate Candina with those cards, you can tag out the Licorice to make sure the Candina resolves. So it's a nice little way to just kind of make sure that you make your opponent waste a card if they don't put you on the Licorice. So if you hard draw it, uh, it's kind of a lot better and just allows you to just pretty much bait your opponent in that sense. But two Licorice is objectively better because this card's a brick otherwise, but I didn't expect there to be like that many Salamangrate. So moving forward, I'd probably maybe bump it up to three. One Lily Bell as well. You only need the one. What's interesting is I did not play Trickstar Korribane, and the reason for that is I didn't really feel like the card was actually doing a whole lot. In my testing, I found that Korribane was actually like a brick more often than not in the sense that, you know, I would just be playing and Corbin would be sitting in my hand doing absolutely nothing. So I figured that'd just be better off being a hand trap or just anything else realistically. You know, it's kind of hard to justify Corbin because it's like a free link too without having to use Lily Bell. Or, you know, you have to basically just have a big monster to attack over, which rarely ever comes up. So I felt like Corbin wasn't really necessary. I cut it towards the end. And honestly, I didn't really miss it. It never came up. So I'm kind of glad that I cut it. If you're playing a pure trick star build, you want to like max out on Corbin. But since we're playing the Sky Strikers, you definitely don't need it, and I definitely did not miss it. So moving on, we have a fuck ton of hand traps. So starting off with the main one, we main decked three copies of Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. The reason I decided to do this is because I knew there was going to be a lot of Salamangrate, and if you just Reaper the Sunlight Wolf, it is very hard for them to essentially play because that's where a lot of their central recursion for the deck comes in. You know, being able to just recur stuff like, uh, you know, their Ash Blossom or their Gazelle or being able to get the Spell or Trap. Like there's just so many good things that Sunlight Wolf provides that it really slows the deck down. And with Trickstar Sky Striker, if you can control the game from that point, assuming you open a starter, you probably should win. There was one or two instances where I Reapered Sunlight Wolf and still lost, but that's only because I didn't open a starter to follow up with to get my engine going. So I was probably gonna lose that game regardless of whatever this card was, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, a double-edged sword because there was instances like in my feature match where I opened multiple of this and it was really, really bad. So again, I was really happy with it overall, but something to just kind of think about in the deck building process moving forward. I don't know if I would play this like if you're going to like your locals because since it's such a high caliber event based off of just the type of players that were there, I knew everyone was going to be either on like Salamangrate or Striker and even like Danger Thunder to an extent. So basically since the meta was so, you know, defined, it was really easy call for Reaper and um, I was pretty happy with it overall. Then we have three copies of Infinite Impermanence. I threw this in the hand trap category because it basically is one. And uh, it's just like a better effect veiler, essentially, because it can't be stopped by Call by the Grave. And that's really huge against Salamangrate specifically, since just stopping their combos and essentially from them being able to go off is so crucial. Not to mention having the ability to negate um, something in the same column can sometimes win you the game, especially if it's like a floodgate in particular. I just love the flexibility that this card offers. And then we have two copies of Ash Blossom, two copies of Ghost Ogre, and two copies 
copies of DD Crow. Now, this may seem a bit weird because I'm not playing three and three of like Ash and Ogre, but the thing is, I didn't want to open multiple hand traps that are only once per turn because if that were the case, it kind of prevents you from being able to stop multiple plays. So, Crow is something I really wanted to incorporate into the deck because it's very strong against Salamangrate, being able to banish their spinny or their counter trap or just any of their cards since it's such a graveyard, res just resurgent deck. Just having the ability to banish those cards is key. And even against Sky Striker, it's actually pretty good. It's like a pseudo called by the grave in the sense that you can just go ahead and banish their Ray. You can banish their Engage when they target it with Kagari, and their turn basically ends. And you might think, oh, well, they're just going to search Engage with Shizuku. You're going to search Reincarnation on your turn, and then you could banish the other Engage out of their hand that they searched off of it. So you pretty much have plays in every situation. And I really like this lineup. Ash was good. Crow was good. Ogre was like kind of okay. Ogre's like good against Striker because you can like ogre things like the multi-roll it's good against salamangra because you can accept like debug but even then it's not like super good against the best decks danger thunder it's really shines because you can hit stuff like the saryuja or the guard dragons or a lot of the big uh, monsters that have link arrows and that kind of just puts a very big halt to a lot of their plays so i like the flexibility ogre is something that i might cut in the future it just kind of depends on how many thunder dragon are running around if the representation falls ogre would definitely get cut out and then wrapping that up, one copy of Effect Veiler. I wanted to play like a fourth copy of Impermanence, and uh, that's kind of what we settled on when we created the deck. So Veiler is just, you know, a nice one. I think this might have been like the swap out for Korriban in all honesty. And it's really funny because I feel like I drew that one Veiler a lot more than I probably should have. Moving on to the spells though, three light stage, uh, pretty, you know, it's standard with two terraforming. What's pretty neat about light stage, especially against Salamangrate, is that if you go first, what's cool is that if they set the counter trap, you can just freeze the counter trap instantly. And so that's like a nice way to kind of just bait out, you know, anything that they have and just prevent them from stopping your plays. What's really good about this deck is there's a lot of cards that do that. So if you activate light stage, they pretty much have to counter trap it. Otherwise it's going to get frozen. Or if you have stuff like some of the other cards you're going to see, we have a lot of ways to bait out their, uh, just their one negation, and then we can just do whatever the hell we want. So that's pretty nice. Uh, then we got three copies of engage. I mean, it's sky striker trick star. So this shouldn't be a surprise. Three copies of widow anchor, and then the one copy of drones. Um, you can make an argument to play a afterburner instead of the third anchor, but it's honestly better to just take their monster and kill them with it rather than just hit something off. Since, you know, you did Salaman great. It's not really bad. You could get some value off of it, but widow anchor being able to steal monsters and negate effects is so, so clutch and it was just absolutely phenomenal three copies three mismatch copies excuse me of mind control uh this again this card is just insane it's another card that if they have roar set you just mind control target their link monster and they have to negate it so that means you one for one and then you can just do whatever the hell you want because that's basically going to be their only negation on field and then as long as the rest of your cards resolve you're going to be just totally fine this card is just nuts you use it to link up into boral sword dragon because they're always going to have like a link two on the field in sunlight wolf it's just so so good and then you got the Sky Striker matchup, like, oh, Mind Control is just insane. How this card is at once per turn is beyond me. Uh, two copies of Potted Desires. Um, I'm kind of a coward. I didn't play three of this because it's it's just like I was drawing Desires into Desires with only two. And I know playing three is correct, but I was we were playing 42 in the deck with three Desires and three Licorice. But I decided I'd rather play 40 cards so I could see my engine pieces more often frequently and uh, cut the just Desires down as well as the Licorice just so I don't see them as often. So honestly, you could play at 42 or 40 either way. I just ended up feeling more comfortable with this. And then the one copy of Scapegoat. Uh, this card should be banned just flat out. This card just wins games by itself. It's just so utterly ridiculous. Wrapping it up though for the traps, three reincarnation. Uh, so reincarnation has really neat interactions with the Salamangrate matchup because they can go chain link one bay links, chain link two the gazelle in hand, and then you reincarnation the gazelle out of their hand so they can't use that effect again in the same turn. And if they don't have like really any extender, their turn is pretty screwed. Or you can like reincarnation like the field spell after they search it with bay links so they can't just get into their uh, reincarnation link summons without taking a uh, minus. So that's pretty sick. And not to mention, it's a monster monster reborn in a trap so you pitching it for any of your nightmare links or anything like that this card is just insane how this thing is still at three i don't know you notice i didn't play droll bowl cover that when we get to the side deck uh, moving on to the extra deck, it wasn't anything too spicy. Uh, we had a two copies of Kagari, a Shizuku, and a Hayate for our Sky Striker engine. This is all you need. You're going to probably go through all four of these if you see the Sky Striker half of your deck, so it's perfectly fine. Uh, we have the Link Karibo and the Link Spider for the... 
um, the scapegoat plays, so that's going to be very common. Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Cerberus for our Link 2s. Uh, you're going to go into these fairly frequently, just they're just really nice fodder. Help pitch for reincarnation, just generic removal all around. Nightmare Unicorn, again, same thing as Cerberus and Phoenix. Trisbania was actually a last minute addition, but it's just kind of really good against Striker and just random back row decks. Being able to just nuke their back row, especially in tandem with like reincarnation and grave, you can do it on your opponent's turn. It's just super, super sick. We have Topologic Bomber Dragon. Uh, again, the same interaction with Reincarnation, being able to just nuke your opponent's whole board on their turn. Not to mention the damage is pretty nice if you can pull it off. One Borolo Dragon, uh, it just outs random shit, so that's pretty cool. One Boral Sword, I probably made this like 70% of my games because this is kind of how you win. You just like mind control like a Link 2, and then you just make Boral Sword, Reincarnation something back, and just kill them. Like, it's just that easy with this deck. It's crazy. Um, one Saryuja, this is actually a uh, Cherry's target, but I did hard make this once, and it actually helped win me a game but this is for the combo decks in, uh, in particular and then one sunlight wolf for our other reaper target for our uh, salamangrate matchup it's the best one if you're not playing uh salamangrate mirror matches because in the mirror match you could like reaper bailings theoretically too sunlight wolf is just the source of so much of their advantage you're definitely going to want to play that moving on to the side deck uh, we have three copies of the best card like ever printed that you can't play in your main deck pankratops like this card just outs everything. It's just beefy. Like, I, I, there's like nothing to say. Like, you just need to side deck this card no matter what. Uh, so three Droll Knock in the side. So the reason I didn't main it is because it's actually pretty bad against Salamangrate, and it's like okay against Striker, but I didn't expect there to be a lot of combo decks like Danger Thunder or the Orcus deck. So I figured I'd actually relegate it to the side deck, and I'm really, really happy that I did because honestly, I didn't miss this card whatsoever. It's just not good, and I'd rather have hand traps that actually stop their plays than play some Something like Droll. So in tandem with that, we played three copies of Lancia. Uh, these are basically the six hand traps you side in for the combo decks because you can just stop them from banishing. That works both for Danger Thunder and Danger Orcus. Droll basically stops all the dangers entirely from drawing your deck. So that was the side strategy for the combo decks. And I only played uh, one of the combo decks the entire tournament. At that point, I was basically out anyway. I was just playing for fun in round 12. Um, then we had three copies of Twin Twister, just generic removal. It's nice to pitch like Reincarnation if you want to, so that's pretty cool. But it's good against Striker, especially if you're like going first and you can just completely obliterate their back row. And then three copies of Summon Limit. This card is nuts because basically it's the new Vanity's Emptiness. If you go up, go up against uh, Salamangrate, if you go first, set up your board of like, you know, Candina and like Shizuka or like licorice whatever and then you just flip summon limit when they go like gazelle spinning and their turn just ends so like there's really nothing else they can do this card is just crazy and the thing is you can just put so much pressure on the field because the deck doesn't really summon too much unless you're going into a boral sword play so you can play under this card fairly well it's just absolutely crazy and the fact that you don't have to have it face up first is just absolutely insane so guys that's gonna go ahead and wrap up the deck profile i ended up playing like five salamangrates like a three strikers i think and then um I played a stun, a uh, guru control, and there was like one other deck I think I played as well. So pretty concentrated in terms of meta overall. And uh, it's really interesting to see how the meta is going to shape up after the UDS. I had an absolute blast. Maybe we'll get that top, uh, that top cut next event comes around. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time. One, two, three.